Hey, I'm Vinny, this is Makeify. One of the most common, probably the most common question I get is how do I make my templates and plans that I use in a lot of my projects and that I make available that you can download for free. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little tutorial on how I make those on the computer. I use Adobe Illustrator to make my templates and plans. It's a little pricey though. A free alternative is a program called Inkscape. It's open source and it runs in Windows, Mac, Linux. I used to use Inkscape before I switched over to Illustrator. It has the same basic functions as Illustrator. It doesn't do some things quite as nice as Illustrator, but it's perfectly capable. Uh, you should be able to follow along with this tutorial and take what you learn and use it in Inkscape. Illustrator and Inkscape are both vector graphics programs as opposed to something like Photoshop, which is a roster graphics program. Roster graphics like JPEGs, PNGs, bitmaps. They're really good at displaying photographs and photorealistic images, but vector graphics are a lot better at displaying line art, uh, which is essentially what plans and templates are. So that's why I go, that's why I use a vector graphics program. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through two examples. First one, I'm gonna show you how to combine basic shapes to design a wooden knob, like the one I made for my light panel video. In the second example, I will show you how to use lines and curves to trace an image and to design a longboard like I did for my longboard video. You might want to make this video full screen so you can see everything well. Let's get started. Okay, so this is Illustrator. I'm using what's currently the most up-to-date version of Illustrator, CC 2017. Uh, it just came out, a, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. So we're going to create a new document, File, New. And there's a bunch of presets that Illustrator has. Uh, I expect my templates and plans to be printed, so we'll go to a print preset, letter size paper. I'm going to change the units to inches. I'm in the United States, so 8.5 by 11 standard letter size piece of paper. And we're going to create. We have our blank document now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to combine some basic shapes. So let's start over here. Here is our, our shape tools, if you left click and hold, brings up a couple different options of different shapes we can choose from. Let's start with a rectangle. I'm going to left click and hold and drag just to drag out a, a rectangular shape. Uh, then go to the selection tool. Uh, I can change dimensions of this up here and I'm going to unclick the constraint width and height because if this is checked like it is now, if I change one of these, the other one will, will change automatically to keep the same proportions, but that's not what I want. What I want, I want to change this. Let's go, let's go an inch. We'll make this knob one inch tall and wide. And then this, we're going to go, let's go a quarter inch. Okay, so there we go, a quarter inch rectangle. And I can select this by either clicking on it, I can left click click and hold on the mouse and drag a rectangle and then anything under that rectangle will get selected. There's only one thing here, but let's zoom in on this. So the keyboard shortcut to zoom in is control and the plus sign. If you're on a Mac, that's command plus. I'm just going to use the window keyboard shortcut. So if, if I say control and you're on a Mac, know that it's the command key. There isn't a control key on Mac keyboard. So control plus zooms in, control minus control negative side and whatever you want to call it zooms out so let's let's zoom in so we can get a better look at this now what i want to do is copy this control c copies if you if you ever forget any of the cut and paste commands if you go up to the edit menu you can see you can just click on one of these or it'll it'll tell you the keyboard shortcut if you forget um, so that's useful but i copied it now i want to paste it now let me show you something if i'm if I just paste it, which is control V, it will paste that object into the dead center of the screen. Okay, that's not what I want here. What I want to do is paste it in place. So that's control shift V and it'll paste it in the exact same spot as the original. So now we have two copies and I want to rotate this one. And I can do that two ways. I can right click on it and go to transform and rotate and then put in an exact angle Okay, we can do it that way. Or if you just move our mouse, if we have the selection tool selected, I can move my mouse over on the outside of one of the corners and it changes to this, this curved arrow. 
and then I can just rotate it, uh, left click, hold, and drag, and I can rotate it to any, any angle I want. Um, if I hold down the shift key, it will force me to just rotate it in 45 degree increments. And this is very helpful. So let's rotate it 90 degrees. Now let's paste another copy in place. Shift control V. Let's rotate this one 45 degrees. And then let's do one more. Shift control uh, V to paste it in place. And then we'll rotate it negative 45. Okay, so now we have four rectangles. And you can see they, any shape in Illustrator uh, has a fill and a stroke. The stroke is the outline and the fill is the, you know, the color in the middle. So all of these, you can see over here, have an outline, a stroke of black and a fill of white. And so you can quickly toggle those. Well, let's select one of these and I'll show you. You can just toggle those and then it reverses those two. Or we can come in and we can change, we double click on, on the, the proper box, like the outline in this case. Uh, I can change the color of that to anything I want. Let's undo that. So to undo, it's Control Z. Again, you can find that up here. Undo, redo, shortcut keyboard keys. Uh, we can change the fill. That's you know any color we want, whatever green. Yeah, that's lovely. Or if we click on the fill or the stroke, we can click on none. And then now you see now this object has no fill. You can do the same with the stroke. Let's let's make all of these with no fill. So I can left click, hold it and drag and anything under that underneath this uh, rectangle will be selected. So I don't have to completely en enclose them. So all of them are now selected. Now you notice not all our objects have the same fill and stroke. So you get this question mark. So let's um, let's let's make this white again. Okay, now they all have the same fill and stroke. But select them all, go to no fill. Now you notice they don't have any fill. Uh, let's select them all. And what I want to do is I want to combine all of these individual four objects into one solid shape. And I can do that with the Pathfinder tool. If you don't have this window visible or any other window, if you go up to the window menu and then you can, you can just pick which window you want visible. So the Pathfinder is visible here. So, okay. So let's select them all again. Pathfinder. And then you have several options on how you can combine um, shapes and paths. So we're going to, we're going to unite them into one, one object. So just click on that and boom. Now it's one object. Now we're going to, we're going to make this a little nicer. <clears throat> I'm going to make a circle. So we'll go over to the ellipse tool. And if I left click and drag with the mouse, I can make ovals and, and circles. And if I hold down the shift key, now it forces me to have to make a perfect circle. This, this also applies to the rectangle tool. If you hold down shift, you will make a perfect square. So let's make this circle. You can see the dimensions width and height show up on the screen. Let's make this uh, 0.8 maybe. Let's try that. And then we want to move this. I want to line these two up so that the centers are aligned. Go to the selection tool. And I can either do that by dragging this into place. And Illustrator is very nice in that when the centers of two objects meet up, it, it lets you know. So it pops up center. Last time I used Inkscape, Inkscape didn't do this. The aligning objects in Inkscape wasn't as nice as it is in Illustrator. I don't know if they've changed that or not, but one advantage of Illustrator is it, it it's very easy to align objects. So I could do it this way. Now they're both aligned. There's two other ways I can do it, or kind of one and a half other ways. Let's zoom out. What I can do is select both of these and I can go to align and I can align them both to the page. So horizontally align them and then vertically align them. And now they're perfectly centered on the page. Let's undo that though. Let's say I don't want both of these objects aligned to the page, but I want just the circle aligned to the um, this other shape. So what I can do is select both of them and then I can go back and click one more time on this this shape and you'll notice the outlining, the blue outlining got thicker and that that indicates that this object is now the anchor. And so if I go to align, now I will align the circle to the anchor horizontally and vertically and boom. Now they are aligned 
and I didn't move the anchor. It stayed in the same place. So that's very, that's very useful. Okay, let's see. Let's actually make this circle. Let's make it a little bigger. Let's go, let's go 0.9. Ooh, okay, see, I didn't have the proportions locked. So it, it screwed up my perfect circle. So let's undo that. Okay, now let's lock those proportions so we don't mess up the circle. We'll go 0.9. Okay, yeah, that looks better. Okay, now let's select both of these and I'm going to combine them into one solid shape, into one solid knob. So I'll go back to the Pathfinder. We'll unite and boom. Now we have a nice looking outline of a knob. Uh, this knob, would, I would cut this out of wood and then drill a hole in it. So let's draw the hole that I would need to drill. And hold down shift to make a perfect circle. We'll just make some size and we can change that size up here. Let's make this exactly a quarter inch for a quarter inch bolt. We'll hit tab and then it automatically changes the other dimension. And then we'll align these two. And another way of selecting multiple objects is you can click on the first object. And then if you hold down shift, you can click on more one or more objects and select multiple objects that way. So we'll select both of these. And then we'll come back and click on this object again to make it the anchor. We'll align them. All right, boom. Now we have our, our hole that we need to drill perfectly centered into our knob. Okay, let's add, let's add some lines so I can mark the dead center of this object. So when I go to drill it, I know where to line up my drill. So let's go to the line segment tool and we're just going to make a line and you, you left click and hold and then you can, you can make your line where, you know, whatever angle, whatever size you want. Again, if you hold down shift, now you're restricted to making 45 degree angles. That's quite helpful. So let's, let's do a straight 90 degree line. Um, let's change, let's change the size of that to, oh, I don't know. Let's go, let's go 0.13. Well, 125, that's, that's half of one quarter. That's an eighth. Okay. Now I want to copy that. So we'll copy it, control C, paste it in place, control shift V. And then I'm going to um, rotate this, hold down shift. I'm going to perfect 90 degree rotation. Now I don't want to combine these two objects. I just want to kind of work with them as one single object. See now they're just, they're two individual objects. So if I select them both, I can group them. Control G will group them. And now they behave as one single object. I can ungroup them once I'm, once I'm done working with them. I can control shift G will ungroup them. And now they're both back to their individual objects. I can, let's group them again. Let's zoom in a little bit. If I double click on this group, you'll notice everything else kind of got grayed out except for my group. And now I can actually edit these individual objects in the group. You can move them around. You can move things by either left click and hold and moving them around the screen, or you can move objects if they're selected using the arrow keys on your keyboard, up, down, left, right. And if you hold down shift, it jumps a larger distance. So that, that can be helpful. So, okay, we made some changes to this group. Now, if we double click somewhere on some empty space, now we're back to the, the whole document. And you'll notice these two objects are still a group, um, but they've been edited. So I'm going to undo all of that because let's, okay. Oh, I want to group them though. Let's group them. Okay. And I want to rotate this. So let's rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. There's a nice little X. I want that X in the center of the circle, select them both, then click on the circle on a second time to make it the anchor. Then we'll align them. And now I have some markings that I can use to drill the hole. Okay. We can also change the stroke of objects. So I'm going to select both of these. We come over here to the uh, stroke window and I can change the weight of that stroke, make it bigger, make it smaller. Let's go, let's go two point. I can also change um, uh, the, the, the end caps. These are all 
they're all enclosed so there isn't an end to these lines. I can change the corners. There's all sorts of things you can do. You can make dashed lines. You can add in arrowheads, which will work for straight lines. But okay, so we make that thicker. Let's make this X a little thinner. Okay, now let's add some text. Go to the text tool, type tool, we'll click, and now we can type in. Let's let's go quarter inch so we know how how big this hole is supposed to be. And with that selected, I can change I can change the font. Oop. I can change how big the font is. Let's let's drop this to maybe eight point font, and let's center that with the circle. Make the circle the anchor. Oop. I don't want it actually on on the outside of the circle, so we'll just use the, the arrow keys on the keyboard. To, yeah, that looks good. Uh, let's change the color of that text to. Uh, I can let's type in uh, a nice little gray. Same thing here because it's just it's there just as a marking. It's not actually part of the of the actual knob. So let's change that as well. Oop, I messed up the color. I forgot a six. Okay, there we go. So there is a there are knob. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of it and I'm going to group it because I want to center this on the page, but I don't want the text to be centered on the page. I want it to be relative to everything else. So I make it into a group and then I can center it onto the page. And then what I can do is I can go over and open up, oops, let's open up uh, another Illustrator file. Um, here's my light panel <clears throat> plans. And what I can do over here in this other file, I can select some elements. I can copy them from this document, go back over here, and I can paste them into here. Or I can even paste them into place. Since both of these documents are letter sized paper, paste in place and they'll go in the exact same spot. So this is very helpful for things like the scale bar that I sat down and spent some time making. And instead of having to remake it every time I make a, a, a template, I can just copy and paste it into my new document. So let's center this on the page. Same thing goes for things like, you know, my makeify.com web address and Creative Commons license and things like that. Okay, so there's our simple little knob. If I wanted to, I could just you know print this right from here. Uh, but if I wanted to share this with someone, upload it online, send it by email, what I would do is I would save this. Well, first off, first off, I want to save my work. So I just save it, and I would save it as an Adobe Illustrator native file format, and then. Later, I can open this up and edit it or copy elements from it and paste it into another, another document. So I'd save that first as an Adobe Illustrator file. And then if I wanted to share it, I would save it as a PDF. So we'll drop down, we'll save it as a PDF. And, and this other window pops up. And there are some presets built in and I expect this to be printed. So I, would, I, I like to choose high quality print and this box here, preserve Illustrator editing capabilities, I like to uncheck this. If it's checked, what I can do is I can open that PDF up in Illustrator and actually edit it as if it was a native Adobe Illustrator file type, kind of, although it, PDFs sometimes don't always display properly when you open them in Illustrator, but you can open them in Illustrator if this box is checked. But I found out the hard way that if this is checked, uh, people who open the PDF on Mac, there can be some formatting issues and it has to do with um, the visibility of layers. And I'll talk about layers here in a minute. But to make sure that I have full <laughs> compatibility across platforms, I like to uncheck that box. And then I, you, can save, you can save the PDF. And it'll save as a PDF that then just about anyone with a computer can open and print off and everything is good. Okay, let's move on to the second example. I'm gonna, I can just close that, I don't need that anymore. Let's start a new document, file new. Letter, my preset, I want inches. Good, 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 create. Okay, 
What, another thing I can do in Illustrator is I can actually, let's go over here, I can drag in um, another file. This is actually, a, this is a roster image, it's a PNG file. I'm just gonna drop it right in here. Now this doesn't convert that roster image into a vector graphic. This is still a roster image, it's just an element now within this, this new document. What I want to do, let's see, let's make this fish a little bigger. And so to make, to resize anything, move your cursor over to one of the corners or one of the edges, and then left click and hold and drag, and you can resize it. But you'll notice my proportions can get all wonky, okay? But if I hold down shift, it locks the proportions. So we maintain our same proportions. So let's just resize it. And I'll center this on the page. Okay, something like that. Now, over here, I can open up my layers window. And layers are a great way to organize a document. So right now we just have one layer and I can double click on it to rename it. I'll just rename this photo, enter. And let's add another layer. So I added another layer. This is like adding transparencies on top of each other. Layers are kind of like stacks of transparencies. And what I can do is I can lock this photo layer. Now that I locked it, I can't edit anything on this layer. And so that's very useful if I don't want to change anything. If everything's how I want it, I can lock it. I can also make layers invisible. So this is also helpful if you wanna isolate different elements in your design. So we'll lock it, I want it visible because I'm gonna trace this. Now we're gonna work on the second layer. And you can have all sorts of layers. I don't know even know what the max is, but I've, I've had dozens of layers in documents before. So, okay, I wanna trace this fish to kind of get a shape of a, a longboard skateboard. So, a couple ways we can do that. I can use my line segment tool like I did before. I can make a line segment, and then if we deselect it, just by clicking in some blank area with the selection tool, that'll deselect it. I can go back to my segment tool and if I click on the end of one of those, of this, this other segment, I can make another segment. But this is a really tedious way of outlining something. So let's, let's get rid of that. Another alternative is to use the pen tool. This is the pen tool. So let's zoom in a little bit. And then pen tool, you just drop in points and then it connects those points automatically with straight lines. So we could outline this fish kind of like that. And uh, oop, backspace will delete the previous point. So we have a, a line that's kind of outlining the fish, but you notice the lines are all straight. And that's, sometimes that's good. In this case, I don't want that. I want a nice curved long board. So let's just delete that with the delete key. To make a nice curve, you can use the curve tool, the curvature tool. Works the same way as a pen tool, I drop points. But now, those points are curves. And, and Illustrator actually does a good job of kind of knowing where I want my curve to be. Let's drop in one more point. Let's backspace, okay. But it's not perfect, as you can see. So we can edit this curve by using the direct selection tool. And then if we, we click on an object to select it, and then we can, we can edit these individual points of the curve. And we click on one, and we can move this around either by dragging it around and do that. Or if we click on it to select it, we can use the arrow keys again and move it around, holding down shift, move it more. The other thing we can do is we can actually change the curvature of this curve. You notice when I click on a point, these handles show up. And these handles are what determine the curve. So you can play around with these, these handles and you can get the curve exactly how you want it. So let's just, let's just do that a little bit here. Get a, some curve in there. Um, now let's say you have a curve like this, but you don't want, let's, let's make this obvious. But you, let's say you don't want one of these points to actually be a curve. You want it to actually be a hard corner. I can change a, one of these points into a corner by clicking this button. And you notice, boom, now we have, let's zoom in. Now it's a, a hard corner. There aren't any handles to adjust because it's a, just a straight corner. 
but this little circle shows up. And so maybe I don't want a perfectly sharp corner. I want to I want to smooth this out a little bit, curve it a little bit. So I can use this. We can curve out that corner and see what it did. It replaced that one point with two points in their curves. And so we have a little bit of a curve. Let's just undo that. Go back to what we had before. Let's move this back. Okay. Now I want to move this point. I want to make it what I want to do. I want it to be even with that. Okay. Let's just change this a little bit. Let's change this a little bit. Make it more skateboard shape. Zoom out. Okay, go back to the selection tool. Okay, so I'm going to copy this curve. Control C. I'm going to paste it in place. Control Shift V. And then I want to I want to make a mirror image of this curve. So I'm going to right click on it. Go to transform. Reflect. And now we can mirror it either vertically or horizontally. We're going to go horizontally. Okay, now we have a mirror image and I'm just going to click on this and then line it up with the other one. And again, Illustrator is very good at letting you know when it's perfectly aligned. Now what I want to do is I want to combine these two curves into one solid shape. And so with curves and lines, if you right click on, if you select multiple lines or curves and then right click on it, I can go to join and it will join those two individual curves. Now you see they are now combined into one solid shape. And then from here, you can still edit the individual points. You can do the same thing if you draw circles and rectangles, you can actually edit the, the corner points with the direct selection tool. So then you can go through here and you could, you know, you could edit this as you see fit. So like here, I maybe want to want to round that out a little bit or something. Yeah. Otherwise, that looks like a okay long board shape, I guess. Not the best, but quick little example. Now, I don't care about this fish anymore, so I can hide this layer. You can also delete layers, but you know, if I ever want to come back and modify it, you know, I'll, I'll keep that photo in there. I'll just make it invisible. So now we have this long board shape, but let's let's rotate it. So we'll just rotate it 90 degrees and let's center it on the page. Okay. Now we have a long board shape, but it's obviously not the right size. You notice the height is six inches. That's a tiny little skateboard. I'd want to make this bigger. So you know, I don't know what 30 inches, let's say 30 inches tall. Hit enter. Boom. Now we have a nice long board, but you notice it's, it's too big to fit on one piece of paper. So what you can do, let me just open up my, my long board template and I'll show you how I, how I dealt with this. So here's my long board template. And so what I have, I have multiple layers that represent different pages. So let's zoom out so you can kind of see. So I just took my design, copied it into multiple layers and then moved it around. And I added this grid. This is just a simple grid of, with lines and some circles so I can line up the pages once I print them out. I have my design copied onto multiple pages and then each page I just moved it around so that the whole design, all parts of the design ended up on at least one piece of paper. And then what I did here is I just had one page visible at a time and I, I saved that as a PDF. And so page one is visible. I save this as like page one. I can show you. So you see, I, I saved each page as its individual PDF. And then what I did is I used Adobe Acrobat Pro to combine those individual PDFs into one, one PDF that contained, you know, whatever, nine pages. I don't believe the free version, Acrobat Viewer. I don't think you can do that in Acrobat for Viewer, the free version. I think you need to use Pro, which again, costs money. And I, I don't know a free way of combining PDFs. One might exist. If you know of one, leave a comment below so other people can learn um, about it. But um, that's how I 
handled something like this with um, multiple pages for a big design. So let's go back to here. So th that's the basics. If you just play around with that, with lines, curves. Oh, let me show you one other quick thing. If you have a line, a shape, anything, you can actually, you can edit it, you can add anchor points. So now we just have, I don't know, what do we have? Eight, nine, 10 anchor points or so. I can add in an anchor point, you know, if I want to refine this shape a little bit. You can add in anchor points that way. You can also delete anchor points. So that's, that's a useful little, little uh, tool. But that's the basics. Uh, once you know how to use lines and curves and combine basic shapes, you can make all sorts of, all sorts of great um, designs, templates and plans and stuff. Again, if you're using a different program like Inkscape, uh, you know, it might look a little different. Um, the tool you might not have all the same functions, but you're gonna be able to do all of what I just showed you. One last thing, if you, if you wanna save this, if you, you, know, you wanna post a picture of this like online, it's not something that you want someone to like necessarily download and print out, you can save the vector graphics as, um, as roster graphics. It'll convert it and go to export and I, I do export as, I export for screens I haven't played around with, but I just go export as, and then we can, we can export it as a, a variety of different things, you know, like a JPEG, for instance, if I wanna post a picture of my design on, the web, on a web page or put it in the video or something, um, JPEG or PNG or something, um, I can save it as that, and then it'll, it'll save it as a, a JPEG, as a roster image, or, Instead of saving it as, as a Adobe Illustrator file, if you want to share it with someone who uses Inkscape and you want them to be able to open it in Inkscape and edit it, you can save it as a SVG, a scalable vector graphic, and then they should be able to open this file in Inkscape. And it usually does a good job. Sometimes you get some weird things happening with the formatting, but if you're creating something that you wanna share and be able to edit it in Inkscape, Save it as an SVG. Okay, so that's the basics of how I make templates and plans. It really isn't too complicated, and there might even be better ways of doing some of the things I showed you, but that, that's really the way I do it, and it works for me. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to keep up to date with my newest videos. Thanks for watching. Uh, there is a free, uh-oh. Woo! So that's the basics of what I do to make templates and plans. You can do, s <laughs> wait, what was I, I wanted to say something, I wanted to say something. Oh, no. I hope you like this video, learned something. Oh man. All right.